may have known him as Diesel, Vinny Vegas, Oz, or Nash. But his best work in wrestling was jumping federations for cash. I heard the click this podcast, and the host I knew as Kevin. He talked about a gun in his mouth, so I figured I'd meet him in heaven. It seems like I'll just have to wait until we run into each other. Meanwhile, St. Anthony just won't stop asking for an introduction to my brother. So I'm perched here forever, high upon heaven's loft. I guess I'll kill time and amuse myself by sucking my own eleven soft. See you soon, Kev. I hope not. Good to see Lanny again. I love that guy. I really did. Stay out of South America. I know. You so see what happens? No, don't come back. That's what Yeah, you go to a nice, safe country like Ecuador, and you, you come to a third world nation like the United States, and you're, you're gone. Yeah. But, you know... That, I think it could have put a little little more time into the happening night. But, um, you know, we opened the show with Lanny Poffo. And uh, did you uh, did you get to spend any time with Lanny? Yeah. What happened was, uh, I think I, I, we did a piece, or, you know, w, w, WWE did a piece on Randy. Mm-hmm. And I just spoke like very but Randy and I were really close I loved Randy to death and I think Lanny just you know I had never really spent time with Lanny and then we did end up doing a sh- uh, a shot up in Thunder Bay and we spent the day up there and it was just he was just so happy that you know that I showed love to his brother yeah so he was always, I mean, any time I ever saw him at signings or anything, he was, he's, 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 you know, he's a, he's a, he was a class act guy. He was. And he was interesting. He was <coughs> one of these guys that was always great to have on. He was one of my favorite guests to have on, present company excluded, um, because he was interesting. He was one of these guys you could talk to about shit, and you didn't just have to, you know, talk about what happened in the ring in 1989. Right talk about almost anything he had a lot of divergent interests well just the fact that he went like to musical he went theater down to, yeah he went down to, per, to peru and, and 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 did his thing down there for a while you know just like anybody that can just i was looking at a thing today on instagram it was like for 1875 dollars <laughs> a month you can live in dominican the, you know, the Dominican. that Republic. was the that was the deal with him he's a very frugal cat and um I, I, he called me the time he said, "I wanted to let you know that I was I'm moving to Ecuador." And I said, "Lanny, what, what is this work? I thought maybe there was a federation starting, or he was going to train luchadors or something." He said, "I said, oh, wow, of all places, that's exciting. What's going on?" He said, "Do you know I'm going to be 47 steps from the beach for eight hundred dollars a month?" I mean, it was it's all it was all about the money for Lanny. Always. I said, "Do you speak Spanish?" He was like, "No." It balls, man. <coughs> I've always said, man, people will say, well, well how, how can you go there to you, and you don't speak the language? They say, keep bring that platinum American Express card. They fucking, they, all of a sudden, everybody speaks English. Oh, the language of green, baby. I want, may, I, may I play a tribute to Lanny Poffo? Yeah. May I, may I take a few minutes of the Kevin Nash podcast? To, I was looking for clips that would be fun, and then I found a trailer for his you shoot which has a bunch of clips in it which i figured would be the best way to just play that and um i don't know it's uh, four minutes or something like that but it's it's cl- it's lanny's greatest moments he was a very eccentric dude that, oh, made, yeah. that made him a lot of fun steve uh let's let's hit everyone with this here you can oh dvds remember dvds I'm gonna, I want you to feel my pain here. Huh? I'm a jabroni. I look in the mirror, I see a jabroni. <laughs> at 59 years old, Randy died at 58 and a half. And then I thought about all the times that I didn't get my way. You know, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Except mine was macho, macho, macho. Mm. Funky like a monkey. Sky's the limit. This is a good place. Dig it. 
Of all the imitations of Randy I've ever seen, that was by far the most recent. You've got felons in the Hall of Fame. Mm. You've got some sorry ass people in the Hall of Fame. You've got some Judy Garland, uh, Amy Winehouses in the Hall of Fame. Everybody seems to think Randy married his high school sweetheart. Well, that's a pretty good trick since she's from Tennessee and he's from Illinois. All right, we're here in that KC Shoot Cinema. We're gonna, we're gonna watch some footage and we'll uh, critique and see if we have any comments about some KC programs prior. Randy Savage bought her from an escort service in Lacey, Kentucky for fucking 80 bucks an hour. He never let her go. That is where Miss Elizabeth came from. He had surveillance. He had, he had, he had all that high tech. You know, he would look out and everything and the gates and everything. He had it all. Was he paranoid? Well, was John F. Kennedy paranoid on November 22nd, 1963? Well, people assassinate presidents. I don't know who'd assassinate a famous wrestler. I'm just saying, sometimes there are plots against people. Was he paranoid? Yes. Randy Savage's bark was so much bigger than his bite. you in the danger zone. Come on along and listen to the lullaby of Broadway. That's all I got to say about that. Lanny, do you think the other wrestlers would sign my book? I said, what do you care? You're Marvin Hamlish. Right. And Adrian Adonis said, who is that fucking guy? Get him out of here. I got a line of blow on the table. Going Broadway is the appropriately titled uh, segment here. Lanny, we're gonna, we're gonna hear some show tunes come up. Hello, Dolly. Uh, that's Barbara Streisand. I had a crush on my fifth grade teacher, uh, name withheld upon request, and... Uh, oh, what was his name? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about Batista, and I know everybody's curious, but if I were a betting man, I would put Wim Plaison's show on Robert Fuller. Sweeney Todd. It's about sour grapes. It's the little thing, uh, you know, I can't get the grapes, so they must be sour. I can't get the grapes, so it must be because I didn't have sex with Pat Patterson. I promise you. I remember you, that one from childhood. Everybody says Steve Lombardi and Pat were doing that. I don't believe it. I just don't. You know why? Because Steve Lombardi told me it wasn't true. And you know what? I believe him for two reasons. Number one, he's never lied to me. And number two, he is an ugly motherfucker. Brigadoon. Today in 1949, my parents made a vow, and I think it's amazing they're still together now. Mixed marriages by nature never seem to get on track. You know my mother's Jewish, you know my dad is black. But he passes for Italian, and we keep his secret well, so Angelo and Judy can spend 50 years in hell. Oh, I bleached my hair, I got in the sunbed, I worked out like a maniac. Steroids was illegal, but I took human growth hormone, HGH, and um, I'm not proud of it, but it's a shoot interview, and I feel like telling you the truth. What a, what a fantastic enhancement to my life she has been. How sweet is that? After you got famous, did you have a plower? WWE put a memo out, stop shitting in Jerry Lawler's crown. Well, imagine owning a business where you have to put out a memo, please stop shitting in someone's hat. That's the first time I've ever seen you rattled. I mean, we've talked about everything. Stephanie Bellers, I think, rattled you a little. Is this true? My feelings are hurt that she would have the temerity to bring that up. No, it's Argentino yeah. Rocca, Antonino Rocca. Yeah. Now, here's what happened. He changed the business with his dick. Hulk Hogan, he's a very tall man, about six stamp. foot seven. One punch from him could send you to heaven. Back then, mm -hmm. they wouldn't book a bodybuilder. They were considered vanity, homosexuality, strangeness auto, fellatio, whatever. Right. Okay? Right. It's, it's, and this, it sounds like you're reading me your resume right now, actually. <laughs> a 400 mile trip, rock as dick, that's all you could talk about. You know, and I pretended not to be interested, but I, found, I thought it was pretty fascinating mm. because it was, it must have been fantastic. <laughs> Kevin, when's the best time you Someone's cock is fantastic. I didn't know who, who, who's, whose cock was fantastic? <laughs> Argentina rock, I guess. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's taking meat gazing to a fucking like the, the Audubon Society. You know, a whole I, new level. 
Jeez. And when you talk about fantastic cock, I guess Tommy Lee has to come up 